The Philadelphia Eagles and Minnesota Vikings seasons going in two very different directions to start 2023. More on other teams that have to avoid that 0-2 hole that the Minnesota Vikings have found themselves in. Our week two picks for the NFL season coming up right now. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next-level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day, big ups to all the everydayers out there. Make sure you are one. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download Game Time, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, it was the the score doesn't really tell the full story of this game, man. Mm-hmm. Correct me if uh, if I'm wrong. Thirty four twenty eight. It did not feel like a one-score game. It felt pretty one-sided for the Philadelphia Eagles, who improved to 2-0 on the season now with the Minnesota Vikings falling into that dreaded 0-2 hole. And uh, we're going to get into a little bit more of some other teams in uh, in Week 2 that have to avoid that 0-2 hole and, you know, 11% or whatever it is uh, that that your likelihood drops to for making the playoffs if you start the season 0-2. And we haven't seen a Super Bowl team in – you know, 25 years at least that that started O2 and and won it all. So it's it's some it's a place that teams do not and really in a lot of ways cannot be in. Specifically though, for those Minnesota Vikings, Matt, is this a is this it? Are, are the Minnesota Vikings cooked already at 0-2 to start this season, even though both games to start the year have been somewhat close in the final score? Not quite. Um, I'm not super high on this team to begin with, so the 0-2 start doesn't blow me away, although I did pick them to beat the Bucks, I thought they would lose this game worse. I only say not really, because the Bears don't look like a contender. Maybe Green Bay or Detroit stubs their toe here in the next month, but I think at best the Vikings are the third best team in this division. So I think they're in trouble, yes. But interesting game. Um I mean, the Eagles run for, what was it, 193 yards, you know, or no, I'm sorry, 259 yards. The Vikings turned the ball over four times. And like you, I never thought this was in doubt, but the Eagles did give up 21 second half points. And the reality is this was closer than it kind of should have been. You know, I mean, Minnesota ran nine times for 28 yards. That's two weeks in a row with zero running game. It's, and Jefferson was great. Hawkinson was great. Cousins was good. It seems like the Eagles should have won this game by 20. And you you, you take some of those um, turnovers away, right? The fumble right. bounces the other way. And I don't know, do the the Vikings win this game? It it doesn't feel like they had any path to win this game, but the score tells you otherwise. Um, But the Vikings are so one-dimensional. They only have a passing game. They they can't stop anybody on defense. DeAndre Smith, or DeAndre Swift, excuse me, running wild, 28 carries, 175 yards and a touchdown after the snoozer he had in week one. Devontae Smith getting loose, 131 yards. He had a long 63-yard touchdown catch. Um, And... And then so you have Kirk Cousins in the passing game. It's just not a good recipe if you're thrown from behind 44 times a game. It's great for fantasy. 364 passing yards for Kirk Cousins, four touchdowns. Jefferson involved. Jordan Addison, the rookie, involved now two weeks in a row uh, having scores. Uh, TJ Hawkinson getting in the end zone a couple of times. Some drops as well uh, on that offense. It could have been a 400-yard game for Kirk yeah. Cousins potentially. So. Uh, but they're just so one-dimensional, and and it's really a waste at this point for a team that has you know only one dimension that they can use weekly. So I don't think that's a good path going forward. And then you look at their schedule. So leading up to the deadline, they've got next week it's the Chargers, hmm. then it is the K- 
Carolina Panthers, which is a winnable game. But then you've got Cowboys, 49ers, Packers amongst wow. the, the next few games. So you'll be sitting there at Halloween, potentially, you Four know, two wins, two and six, maybe. If you're fortunate. I mean, Carolina is the only one I think they're favored in, in that situation. There's one more they will be at uh, Bears is the other team that's on. The oh, OK, line. so that, you know, again, but that those are the I think the two worst teams in the division right now, clearly. Yeah. And I almost want to talk about the Eagles more like clearly they just said, you guys can't stop the run. We're just going to run and run and run and run it at an ungodly pace. But it just seems like and I, I really gave the Patriots defense a lot of credit in week one. I feel like Hertz hasn't quite clicked in yet. You know, like he's not bad. He just isn't runner up MVP Hertz at this point. I agree. And so this is why this game was so important to look at the Philadelphia Eagles side, because they Mm -hmm. were the team that, okay. I mean, the Eagles are one of the best teams in the NFL and everybody knows that coming into the year, but it's like, okay, but maybe you want to get them early in the season, you know, new coordinators on both sides of the ball Mm -hmm. and a lot of changeover. So missing some key pieces in the, in the secondary that were part of their run last year, maybe you can get them. And, you know, we did see him get them in the passing game in this, in this one with the, uh, from the Minnesota Vikings and Kirk cousins throwing all over him. But the, the rest of the team is still good. And for the early season struggles while they figure things out with a new look team for the Eagles to come out of it two and oh is is so important for them. And then yeah. now you look ahead at their schedule and just it's a very different picture than what we just talked about with the Vikings. Exactly. And hey, I mean I can explain the way it's early season. You gave Belichick months to prepare for you and then you have to turn around and play what four days later. So maybe you're not going to be super sharp in the passing game. And maybe the O line's not Nah, the O-line's fine. What am I talking about? I mean, they just opened hole <laughs> after hole, you know. But yeah. maybe the quarterback's just not hit his midseason form yet. I'm not particularly worried with the Eagles. And you mentioned coordinator changes. They'll be fine. I just They just don't look quite as dominant to me, but I'm nitpicking. And they got past the the first two teams. Um, yeah. You know, one score wins for the, uh, for the Eagles. Then they get Bucks, Commanders, Rams, and Aaron Rodgers list Jets. And then the yeah, schedule like is a little bit more difficult. You get Dolphins, Cowboys, Chiefs, Bills, 49ers in the middle of the year. So they need to stack up some wins before they hit that part mm-hmm. of their schedule if they're trying to get another one seed in the NFC. But that uh, 2-0 start, really important to, to give them some uh, some leeway to, to lose a couple games in there against some really good football teams before uh, you know before they get ready for their playoff stretch. And this looks like, you know, a, a, a playoff team again. So any of those yeah. early season worries that you could have seen from the Eagles, they, I think they've, uh, you know, they've, they've hurt, they've cleared that hurdle. Yeah, and I'm sure they'll work them out. And it sounds like they'll, there's a pretty good chance they will be six and oh, before they start to play the playoff caliber type teams, you know, by the way, week six jets. Do they face Kirk cousins again? <laughs> ah, there you go. Could be. I mean, bikes are in trouble, man. I think the Vikes are in big trouble the more I think through this. You mentioned the schedule. It's not great. And I don't know if Cousins will be on the move. They don't have any kind of young contingency plan. You know, I don't know who you'd even hand it over to, unfortunately. And all you're doing, if you're like, this is why, and look, uh, I, you can't take, after two weeks, after one week, you can't make too many grand conclusions about the NFL because things change and, and it's mm-hmm. just a chaotic league sometimes. Absolutely but, is. Uh, you know, I was bullish on the the Bears. I, I hated what I saw from them in Week One. I oh, they were terrible. I immediately regretted it. And look, they could they could flip the script right here in Week Two, and they kind of did that last year mid season. Mm-hmm. It started to look a lot different. So we'll see what they figure out. Um, but I predicted the Vikings would be last in the division because this is kind of what I saw from them. And you're hurting your lo- what? I, and I don't know if it's well, I don't know what they're doing. First of all, and we, we've talked about that, and I still don't understand what their plan was this year because you could see a lot of this coming. Mm-hmm. All you're doing is with Kirk Cousins as your quarterback this year is being good enough to not get the next great quarterback for your franchise. Yeah. I mean, playing the fence between rebuilding and winning now doesn't really work in the league. And if you hold on to him long enough to win against the Bears, win against the Panthers, then you're still not going to get your next franchise quarterback. Right. So, like, mm-hmm. I trading him now is actually best for the franchise long term. They just will not do that. So they might have to go two and six first, then trade him at the deadline. If that Kirk Cousins trade happens all along, and who knows if the Jets are even looking at that sort of an option, but Kirk Cousins is good quarterback for a team that wants to try to make a run. And the Vikings are not going to be that team this year. 
I mean, we're really looking ahead. They've only played two games, but I could see them being the team that lets Cousins go, boom, you know, he signs somewhere else or they trade him, get a comp pick back for him, some kind of pick in return, go make a trade for Kyler Murray. And then this might be a pretty dynamic offense and try to fix the defense with all your other resources, you know? We'll see how it goes. Uh, it's still early in the season. They're not done yet. The 11% uh, that always gets referenced for teams, percentage chances of making the playoffs at 0-2 looks uh, looks like an uphill battle for those Minnesota Vikings here in the NFC. So we'll see if they can turn that around with the run game and the defense. Next, Matt, let's make the rest of our picks for Week 2 and especially look at some other teams that don't want to fall in that 0-2 hole. Next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by the Game Time app. Buying tickets to your favorite sporting events should not be stressful. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have at your next football game. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for football games, baseball games, basketball games, hockey, but not just sports either. Concerts, comedy, theater, music, anything you are going to see that you need tickets for, you can find those on the Game Time app. Flash deals with uh, special, special last-minute tickets. Um, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. You get images of the seats, by the way, which is really cool. I went to a concert recently, and it was you know just whatever, general admission, so I didn't need to see a photo of my seats and where I was going to be, but I went to see a San Francisco Giants game, got some last minute tickets on a Friday night to go see the uh, a ball game. And I did get uh, a photo of my seats. So I know exactly what I'm getting before I go sit down and you can buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps. You're all set tickets sent directly to your phone. Don't have to dig through your emails, snag the tickets without the stress with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code locked on NFL for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So we did make some picks already yesterday in our six pack. One of those teams that cannot go 0 and two to start the season. They must win is the Buffalo Bills, who are hosting the Raiders. That line getting a little, it was nine and a half. I think we checked in yesterday. I think it's getting closer to uh, eight points here as we reach Friday morning. Uh, we already broke down some of those games. So Raiders, Bills, 49ers, Rams, uh, Bears, Bucks, Colts, Texans, Giants, Cardinals, uh, Commanders at the Denver Broncos were part of our six pack yesterday. So let's get into the rest of these. But um, I just want to mention the Buffalo Bills again because that's one team that cannot afford to lose and go 0 and 2 there in the uh in the AFC East but another one Matt I want to start here is the Cincinnati Bengals. The yeah. Baltimore Ravens are 1 and 0 at the 0 and 1 Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals were the most disappointing team probably in the entire NFL in week 1, but those Bengals are favored by 3 points at home against the Ravens. So my Steeler fans might disagree, but the Bengals and Giants, especially the Bengals, well, maybe the Bears, were the worst offenses in the league last week. I mean, there were some horrendous performances, but none worse than the Bengals. And the Browns blitzed Burrow, who never gets blitzed. And the Ravens also didn't deal with blitz particularly well. They're, these are two offenses that will be kind and say are in flux. I mean... Uh, the weather didn't help and Burrow looked like he shouldn't have been out there and the Ravens are still kind of putting the pieces together, but they're fine. They may not have their starting center and left tackle though. I think this is a really low scoring game compared to what could be with these quarterbacks. So I just want the points. I think the Ravens win it flat out too. I really didn't like what I saw from the Bengals offense last week. A good Maybe it's a one off. Here. You know. A good nugget from Robert Mays at Robert Mays on Twitter. Uh, just how seismic is the Ravens offensive shift under new offensive coordinator Todd Munkin on Sunday in week one, Baltimore used three wide receivers on 40 plays last year, the entire season, they only used three wide receivers on 152 snaps That's wow. the entire year. So they're almost a third of the way there after one week. Um, it wasn't a dynamic passing offense last week, but it shows you what they're trying to do there. So I actually like the Bengals in this one, um, you know, field goal. It feels like the line is, is right. So I'm not rushing to go bet on the Bengals here. 
uh, and give up three points. But I like the Bengals at home. I I think the Bengals are – I think – the best way to put it is I think the Ravens are as much of a work in progress to start the year as we saw from the Bengals in week one. And I do expect okay. a lot better Bengals to show up here in week two. That was kind of their preseason game, I think, in week one. So I actually do like the Bengals to bounce back, and both Ravens and Bengals here are one and one. And I think there's just a lot more riding on it for the Bengals at home to uh, to not fall into that 0-2 hole. I get it. It's going to be a good game and a telling one. Absolutely. Uh, how about the Packers and Falcons? The one and no Packers at the one and no Falcons. Atlanta favored by one and a half points at home. Man. I don't have a strong feeling about this one, but I'm excited about the game. I, I, I'm a Falcons supporter, especially for winning the division over under win total, that sort of thing. But I picked the Packers to win their division as well. And I'm really impressed with Jordan Love. I just don't know if the Packers will stop the run. You know, last year, Packer defense, I would say, man, I don't know. But I think that they maybe have turned the corner. I'm impressed with the team. I guess I'll take Green Bay. No, I want the points. I'm sorry. I'm going to take the home team. I want Atlanta here. But I, I think this is a very equal game. I'm going to take the points and take the Packers on the road. I feel really good about this one, actually. This one is one I might actually rush to FanDuel and, okay. and put a little on because, and by the way, all of our lines today we're referencing coming from FanDuel Sportsbook. I, I saw everything I needed to see from Jordan Love. That was the big question mark. The, the Packers just have a the Packers have a really good roster, top to bottom. They do. They're a better team than the Falcons. And if Jordan Love is going to be good, Packers are fine. And, and the Packers might even run away with the North in that case. Uh, and the Atlanta Falcons, okay, you got a strong running game, but are you going to run for points early and then lean on the Packers? You know, you're not playing, uh, you're not playing a pushover sort of a team. So you might try to keep it close with the run game, but if you get behind against the Packers and the Packers defense is better than what the Falcons saw in Week One, then that's rough because you're not going to run from behind to go win the game. And so I like getting points for the Packers here in this one because I just think they're a better football team. I. I'm not touching it. I'm looking forward to the game. I think they're equal. They're both kind of my teams. I could really go either way. So I hear what you're saying. I think Green Bay is a better team too. Uh, another team that cannot fall into an 0-2 hole is the Seattle Seahawks because the 49ers might run away with the West here, and there's uh, going to be a battle for the rest of the seeding in the NFC this season, including with the Detroit Lions, who are now at home, favored by 4.5 at 1-0, and hosting those Seattle Seahawks. Who you got in this one, Matt? I mean, is Detroit set up for a letdown after beating the Super Bowl champs? I doubt it. It's the home opener. You get 10 days to prepare. I think that offense is really, really good for the Lions. Goff is always tremendous at home. I didn't like what I saw from Seattle at all. I didn't like what I saw from Geno. Their right tackle is now on IR, and they signed 84-year-old Jason Peters, who has to weigh 400 pounds. He might be playing left tackle. I mean, like – there's some bad mojo going on in Seattle right now. I'm going to take the Lions. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons why the Seattle Seahawks might not bounce back from their first week loss and its injuries. Yeah. Those young tackles up front is a big part of that. And uh, you lose your two starting tackles. That That's tough to overcome for a lot of teams. And I don't really like what's going on with some other uh, – places on their defense on the on the defensive mm. line either um you know that's that's kind of been a powerhouse unit for a long time for the seahawks and i'm not sure if it is right now it didn't, didn't look like it in week one so i do like the lions in this one four and a half again it's, it's not one i'm rushing to fan duel to, to place a bet on but i'm going to give up the points i like the lions at home extra time to prepare and extra time to rest after the opener against kansas city probably feeling good about themselves here they can run the ball a little bit they can pass the ball a little bit good offensive line play and uh, and I think they shouldn't have too much of a problem on defense against the Seattle Seahawks because of the the tackles we mentioned there. And I do want to have uh, I do want to tell you about a note here on mm-hmm. the uh, on the Detroit Lions. This is Lions quarterback Jared Goff. He's thrown 359 straight passes without an interception, which oh, is. Right. Close to the record. In fact, if he if they drop back and uh, he throws forty three times, he could tie that record. He's forty three passes away from tying Aaron Rodgers' NFL record of four hundred and two straight passes without an interception. That happened in twenty eighteen for Aaron Rodgers. So if he dro- if Jared Goff drops back forty four times, doesn't throw a pick in this game, he will be the new record holder. Wow! I mean, with that running game and O line and taking care of the football, Lions will be hard to beat. If that keeps up. 
I don't think he's going to break that record in this game because I just don't think he's going to attempt that many passes. I don't think he's going to. Probably not. Yeah. Chargers Titans. These mm-hmm. two more teams. The, these are two more teams on the list that cannot fall to 0 and 2, and one of them will. The 0 and 1 Chargers at the 0 and 1 Titans. Chargers on the road, favored by three. I trust the Titans coaching staff, home field advantage, physicality much more, but I don't know the threes enough. I know the Chargers ran all over Miami, but that was kind of Vic Fangio just backing off the line of scrimmage. And the, I don't think the Chargers will have nearly the rushing success and Austin Eckler is questionable. Yeah. But I really don't care because I think Herbert then throws for 400. You know, I mean, I think that, you know, the Chargers D worries me, but I'm going to lay the points on the road. I'm going to take the home dog in this one just because okay. I think it has an opportunity to be a close game. Um, you know, a well-coached team at home in the Titans. The Chargers are a better team, but I like getting the points, I think, on this one. So uh, if you give me the points with the Titans. Don't feel great about it. No, I haven't right. felt great about any of our picks so far. <laughs> the Lions one I feel the best about, but there's some good games, and these lines are pretty strong. All right, we got some more games coming up, including uh, a playoff rematch, Chiefs, Jaguars, Speaking of a team that cannot fall 0-2 next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Uh, Has there ever been a time in your life when racing thoughts keep you awake at night, waking you up early, uh, preventing you from being able to enjoy your life or falling asleep even in the first place? I mean, this is a story of my life. my nemesis has been sleep, and I cannot shut the old mm-hmm. noggin off. Uh, it, it takes a little. T- it takes some time to boot up in the morning, and it takes a long time to shut off at night. Do you ever find that as you're trying to fall asleep, your brain just suddenly won't stop talking? Do you 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 know you have thoughts of uh, they just start racing at bedtime, inopportune moments throughout the day. You're thinking about things you need to that you didn't do the day before that you need to do the next day, and uh, one of the great ways to get those racing thoughts to turn off is to talk them through and therapy gives you a place to do that. So you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace. If you were thinking about starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, dot com slash locked on. Oh, I think we got some good ones at, at prize picks this week, Matt. I, you just mentioned one that actually is a good one that I didn't have written down, and that is Herbert. You like mm-hmm. the more than on passing yards for Herbert this week, Matt? I do. I do. I don't think that they'll run nearly as much as they did in week one. I got a couple more here you uh, here for you. Prize picks, the most fun you'll have playing daily fantasy sports this season and win up to 25 times your money. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. You can place those entries in less than 60 seconds. It's easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat types, touchdowns, yards, receiving yards, rushing yards, passing yards. And this week, I am selecting at prize picks. I like Josh Allen bouncing back, not throwing all the interceptions, going over 256.5 yards passing against the Raiders in that secondary. Uh, Daniel Jones, actually. We, we kind of crushed Daniel Jones this week, Matt, but I like him going over 207.5 passing yards against the Arizona Cardinals. And here's one that I think is an easy one. Evan Ingram against the Chiefs. He only has to get hmm. over 39.5 receiving yards. So give me 40 yards plus for Evan Ingram. Jaguars tied in all day long and Matt will throw in the fourth one of, uh, of Justin Herbert going over, going yeah, more than on his more. passing yards. I like that one. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that is pricepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100 prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Here we go. Let's continue making our picks for week two. And we have the 0-1 Chicago Bears at the 1-0 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, the Bears, this isn't one of those teams that I'm putting in the bucket of, oh, my God, they must win. You can't fall in an 0-2 hole because clearly this is a team that's still rebuilding and maybe further 
further from their end goal than I thought they were going to be based on week one. But they can also show up in Tampa and be like, no, 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 we that was funny. That was goofy in week one, but we actually are here and ready to compete a little bit this year in 2023. That being said, Buccaneers favored by three points at home. I like the Bucs here, not just because they're coming off a win, but they still have a lot of NFL players. I know that's not the greatest compliment, but Mayfield's not awful. He's been around the block. The O-line's okay. I mean, there's some star power here. I just can't get the taste out of my mouth of how bad the Bears were last week. I mean, Fields looks terrible. The offensive line now has a lot of injuries. They're not getting the ball in DJ Moore's hands. The defense looks like one of the worst in the league. No pass rush. I mean, I, I, I'm not giving you a hard time because I know you're a Bears guy, but I, I think we forget that they earned the first overall pick last year. Right. And uh, the, the D-line is going to be a problem for them. And and mm -hmm. uh, Kyler Gordon, uh, Kyler Gordon, right? A cornerback. I, I just yeah. saw that he's going to be out, it looks like, oh, is he? this week. Yeah. And, you know, so the defense, look, and this is the problem I have because Justin Fields is like the least of their problems. He, you, you go rewatch that game, and it wasn't good at all from Justin Fields. He has no. to be better. So I, I, I need to see a lot more there. But they didn't have very many design runs for him. Um, his PFF grade and his EPA per play were not as bad as, you know, Pickett and Burrow and some of these guys. It was actually yeah. closer to middle of the road for the quarterbacks. So, um, but what the problem I have is, is overall coaching and, and how things were schemed up on offense. You got to wow. target, you got to target DJ more, more than two times. Like, what are you even doing? What was the whole point of the whole off season? Right. If you're not targeting that guy more than twice a game, you should get, you should get 15 targets, not two targets. Um, and, Aberflus is like supposed to, it was supposed to be a high character, tough guy, play hard team. The guys like Claypool and Cole Komet, like, what are you? I didn't even know what they were doing out there. Walking that around and yeah. After, right. So, uh, Fields is one thing, but I didn't like anything from what I saw in week one. So, right now, for the rest of the year, all it took was one week. And I know I jumped off that one quick, but I got to see something from the Bears before I believe anything yeah. good is going to happen this year. And three points is not nearly enough at home uh, for the Buccaneers to, to talk me off of that one. And we, we, I liked what I saw from on the other side of things. I liked what I saw from the Bucs. Yeah. So I'll give up those three points from the Bucs all day. Me too. That's the one I probably feel most confident that we brought up so far. How about the Kansas City Chiefs, Matt, at 0-1 at the 1-0 Jacksonville Jaguars. Chiefs favored by three at home. And it is looking good for both Chris Jones and Travis Kelsey to be playing in this one. You said they're at home. I think this is a Jacksonville game. Uh, at Jacksonville Jaguars. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we got a home dog again. I'm taking the Chiefs. Uh, I mean, I don't feel the same way about the Bengals. We'll get to the Bills. But, I mean, I'll, I bring those three teams up because they're favorites in the AFC and they're all 0-1. But I think somebody poked the Bear and the Bears are going to come back and roar with Kelsey and Jones and Mahomes. The O-line's fine. The Jags are impressive. They really are. Lawrence is very impressive, but I don't love their secondary. They're, they still have some youth. I don't think – I think this is a touchdown game in the Chiefs' favor. I mean, Jags getting points at home, I would pick against almost any team in the NFL. I might even pick them against the Chiefs if the Chiefs had won in week one. But with Jones back and mm -hmm. Kelsey back on the field, it just it just changes everything, and this oh, is man. a team that's going to come back angry after that. Week one loss, extra time to prepare. Time. Uh, I, I'm going to give up the points uh, on the road, which is usually something I don't do a lot and I've done a couple times this week and take those Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, I, I feel pretty good about that one too. And that's not even the slightest bit of a knock on the Bengals. Or the Jaguars, mm -hmm. am I talking about? On the Jaguars, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I do like the way the Jaguars are going. And I still like that Evan Ingram more than at prize picks. How about the mm -hmm. New York Jets at 1-0? Surprisingly, that we're able to knock off the Bills, even without Aaron Rodgers in week one, uh, but they were at maybe the most impressive team in the NFL in week one, the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys at home favored by nine, Matt. They're the better team. They're the more well-rounded team, of course. I just think these two defenses are smothering. So the, the Jets getting nine against anybody, I'm taking the Jets. I mean, I think Dallas this might be the second best team in the league right now behind the Niners if I were power ranking them. But I think the Jets' D can keep every game close, and they can probably run the ball reasonably well. I want the points. 
this is a tough one with a team favored by that much. Yeah. And the over under is the lowest on the schedule this week at 38 and a half points, I think. So like, I, I think you laid it out perfectly too much defense for the, the spread to be that big. I'm not touching it. I would not bet on any part of this football game uh, except for straight up the Cowboys to win. Okay. Yeah. That, which is a total cop out by me. Okay. That's you're, a good you're one. You're taking uh, the points. Uh, I, I, I'm not taking anything. I don't know. I, All I'm right, you're staying the, away. All right, I, that's fine. What's that would, that right? I don't know. If the, the money lines, you don't really get much for a straight up Cowboys bet anyway, but um, I would probably get, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't trust it from the Jets perspective, by the way, uh, Brees Hall still going to be on a pitch count for the Jets, but they got cook. I, I, I think that's a smart way to play it. Even if he was cleared hundred percent. I bet they both run the ball combined 35 times though. But how many yards are they going to get against the Cowboys? Yeah, it's going to be tough. Yeah. Uh, Here we go. The Miami Dolphins at the New England Mm -hmm. Patriots Sunday night football. Dolphins on the road, favored by three. Hmm. I loved what they did. But, man, Belichick at home Sunday night, figuring out ways to deal with some of this crazy motion they've seen. I'll still take Miami. I mean, the Patriots offense was kind of an underreported story as – Pretty darn good. And, and Matt Jones. Jones as well. Yeah. yeah. I don't think anyone gave them that credit. We'll see if it lasts. I'll take Miami and I'll, I'll, I'll lay the points. This is this is a, a tough one, but I, I'm going to go with my gut here and go Bill Belichick, home dog, and take the points. I don't think we're going to see 466 passing yards from Tua in this one. Uh, I, Tyreek Hill is always going to be Tyreek Hill, but Bill's going to have an answer for that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, if, if they have to just – rely on the ground game, the Dolphins, for, for a lot of the game. Uh, that'll be an interesting one. So um, as much as I think the Dolphins are such a better football team, Bill Belichick's Patriots at home. Getting three. I'm going to take the points. I'm going to take the points. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not touching it, but I'm looking forward to it. Saints-Panthers, the 1-0 Saints at the 0-1 Panthers. New Orleans, we got a lot of teams on the road that are favored by a field goal, Matt, including the Saints here in this one. Yeah, and I'm going to bite. I'll take New Orleans. Uh, the Panthers are another team I think are really a bottom feeder, particularly on offense. And I think the Saints are well-rounded enough that they can bang their way to a touchdown victory here. But it seems like a little bit of a sucker bet. I, I, I don't like the Panthers to beat anybody. And even though they're at home and getting three points, it's just not enough because the Saints are a better team. So give me the Saints. That's my point too, yeah. And the final Monday nighter of a double header on Monday night, Matt, is your Pittsburgh. I think we have two weeks in a row of double headers on Monday night, which is odd to me. I like and, it. Yeah. Oh, do you? I like. I, I like the the more games on other days that aren't Sunday allows me to watch more. So as sure. long as they're not Saturday, I wish we could throw some Friday games in there as well. In fact, I think I wish we could just move all the Thursday stuff to Friday. Yeah, me too. I hate the Thursday games, but if they also played Tuesday and Wednesday, I wouldn't mind, I guess, by that premise. I, yeah, I would watch it if they could work <laughs> it out with my weeks and, and make it safe for everybody. Give me football every single day, NFL football specifically. Uh, so the Browns, 1-0, are favored by 2.5 over the Pittsburgh Steelers at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh gets to stay at home for their first two games of the season here, Matt. Laid a complete egg against the 49ers in Week 1. And again, this division... You can't start own two. So my co-host on the drive that you can find on Steelers.com, Dale Lawley, he has been covering the team, I want to say, well over 20 years and maybe up to 30. He's never seen the Steelers lose at home on Monday night. Wow. Mike Tomlin is 26 or 25, 6 and 1 against the Browns. I'm taking Cleveland. I just think they're better right now. I, I'm sure people are falling out of their chairs, but they were very impressive and just bullied the crap out of the Bengals. The Steelers got bullied to no end. And usually that means the Steelers will come back and be the most physical team you've ever seen. But there's no Cam Hayward to try to stop Nick Chubb. I mean, that's a terrible situation to me against those guards. And the Browns like led the, the league last week in man coverage. Well, Deontay Johnson's their best man, man beater, and he's out, you know, so I'm not particularly worried about Pickett. I think the Steelers will look respectable, but I think this is just a terrible matchup with those two guys being out. 
Calvin Austin for the Steelers, another sneaky yeah. Morgan pick on prize picks, daily fantasy guy here in this one. Uh, here's a good nugget for, for you, and you can relay this to Dale Lawley on the drive, Matt. Um, and it's from George Kittle about the game last week. And the 49ers have so many weapons on offense, and George Kittle is basically like, look, okay, good job. You were able to have Minka focus on me, but that just mm-hmm. opened up everybody else. So good luck with Christian McCaffrey and Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel. The Browns don't have that on offense. Right. No, so no, no. really what I'm looking at in this game is a lot of Chubb and uh, an angry Steelers team and an under total here. Oh, uh, I like the under for sure. No. Um, and, and if it's going to be an under and you got a home dog with everything you laid out there about the Steelers bounce back Steelers, I, I think I want to take the points. I would, I wish it was a full field goal instead of two and a half though. I don't love it being a two and a half. I think the Browns win by three ish. So I'm not going to touch the game, but I am going to pick them to win in a very close, low scoring game. Um, you you saw TJ Watt with three sacks last year or last week. Now he gets a backup right tackle again. You know, mm-hmm. could he get up to five or six? I mean, could be yep. you know, for the year. Get a get a head start on that defensive player of the year award. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of competition this year. There's some, including Miles Garrett, who's gonna recap it again. Type, right. Yeah. And and Pickett needs to not have uh needs to have oh. a clear picture of what he's thrown to and hit the open man when he's out there mm-hmm. and not get concussed. I have a lot more belief that that will happen. Frankly, he may I mean Deshaun Watson has not been good for the Browns. I mean no. they, they won in spite of him last week. Right. Everything Absolutely. else was good. Yeah. yeah, that's the other thing is the, the Browns weren't super impressive last week. Not on offense. Especially with with Deshaun Watson in the in the passing game. Mm-hmm. Very much okay. so. That is our picks for week two. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. Matt and I back Monday to break it all down right here. Peacock and Williamson.